Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and I am coming you. Uh, I am coming to you with hot off the presses coverage of the Andrew of Andrew Yang, absolutely crushing it in the September twelfth ABC Houston debate. Man, he was fantastic tonight. It was. I'm so excited. I'm just so excited i'm like <laughs> i just danced a jig i'm like so like had a celebratory dance after it was done i am so excited about what is happening right now in american history and i am super excited to share my thoughts with you about andrew yang and how he won fully won tonight's debate so let's talk about it all right so it is incredible what happened this evening so first of all i just want to take a moment like i was born in 1970 right and I have lived through a lot. You know, I remember what happened with the Challenger, and I lived through 9-11, and I lived through, um, you know, many, 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 many events. Uh, I can remember a lot of historical events. And uh, I will tell you right now, I have never seen anything like this, because I think what's happening right now is we are seeing the momentum of having our first tech-savvy president uh, restoring a president to the White House who will care for every American, not just a few Americans, and having an, a president whose in, who's intellect will match the needs of the times. I truly believe that within my lifetime, there has never been a president who has even remotely approached Andrew Yang's level of intelligence. His ability to embrace non-intuitive ideas, his ability uh, to think about the the bene the goodwill for this nation at the macro level and for the world like that's the other thing is his ideas are so big that I think that not only they're gonna fix America they're really gonna set a model for government throughout the world it's truly incredible I am so excited all right so let's talk about how and why Andrew Yang won absolutely won without a doubt crushed uh, his performance tonight and is continuing a non-stop downhill momentum roll right down a mountainside right like it's like his momentum is just picking up so much speed and i think he's gonna he's gonna destroy anybody who gets in front of him at this point right because first debate second debate third debate better 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 like he is getting better with every single debate Let's talk about what he did tonight. First of all, the second he walked on the stage, he beat 12 losers, right? So let's talk about the losers he beat, right? He beat Gabbard, Williamson, de Blasio, Steyer, Bennett, Delaney, Bullock, Ryan, right? That Those people are still, like, still in the mix. Maybe, you know, yeah, I guess, right? And then, in addition to that, Swalwell, Hickenlooper, Gillibrand, Inslee are gone they are gone right like out right now here's the thing yang rolled up on the stage because he met the requirements to be there and every single one of the 12 losers i just mentioned did not now why am i calling them losers not to be cruel right but to be factual they lost thousands of hours of coverage right of, of media coverage they lost the opportunities for those boom moments those opportunities to make the American people laugh, the opportunity to impress the American people, the opportunity to share new ideas with the American people. They all failed to make the requirements for the debate and they are they and they lost out on the opportunity of being there tonight. Yang didn't. He beat every single one of those losers who lost all of that tonight. Okay? All right. Let's talk about why Andrew Yang won tonight's debate. Okay, first and foremost, this is huge. Three central words, above the fray, above the fray, above the fray, right? No, no savage attacks on anybody, just talking about, here's my ideas, here's I'm gonna make the lives of Americans better, here's a new, well, we're gonna get to the new idea in a second, but above the fray. While the rest of those 10 candidates bickered and sniped and attacked each other, Yang was like, I'm above the fray. I got things that are important to say. I don't have time 
for disses and insults and denigrations and 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 pettiness and i don't have time for it right i need to serve the american people and i think that is becoming incredibly clear incredibly clear that yang is above the fray all the other candidates are right in the mire right the mud is slinging right man it's like i ain't got time for it right all right so so and i'm specifically talking about between yang and the other candidates on the stage didn't take a moment right to 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 do anything except present his own ideas and say this is how i am distinguished this is how i'm going to make your life better and it shows his focus and it shows his genuine care for the people of america he's literally saying i don't have a moment to insult any of these people on this stage because I got too much to accomplish for you as an American. And I take your goodwill. I, I, I take the, your state of humanity is more important than me saying mean things about these people. Incredible. All right. Tonight, we saw a new person arrive within Andrew Yang, right? So tonight, we saw Andrew Yang, the stranger. Now, what do I mean by that, right? Well, there's a fantastic film, if you haven't seen it, it's old, it's okay if you haven't seen it, it's called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and it starred Clint Eastwood, and he played a dude called The Stranger. He was so cool, he didn't even have a name, right? Like, <laughs> so, it's a spaghetti western, it's one of the best American films ever made, I know it's made by Italian people, right? <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic, and, um, and here's the thing, The Stranger does not speak many words, right? He just lights a whole bunch of stogies, uh, like, um, you know, wears, wears iron at his side and just looks cool throughout the film, has a super dope draped, like, poncho. He's just cool through the whole movie, right? And Andrew Yang showed up as the stranger tonight. He didn't say a lot, right? In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see if he was one of the people who spoke the least tonight. Did not hurt him a bit. Here's why. Just like the stranger... We are now seeing, Andrew Yang has figured it out. He's like, okay, media blackout, Yang media blackout. It's a thing. We're fighting it. So how do I make it work for me? Here's how you do it. Every time you open your mouth, you make your words matter. Boom. Problem solved. Amazing. Right? And that's exactly what Yang did. Yang the, sweat, Yang the Stranger show, show, showed up with the dope poncho, like, you know, just super cool hat. And few words, and every word he said mattered, mattered, right? Every word, every word he said had freight. Every word he said had meaning. Every word he said had consequence, right? Unlike so many candidates on the stage whose words were meaningless and carried no freight and were shallow echoes, right? But not Yang. Every word coming out of his mouth matters like the strangers and when he talks there's a hush there's a hush right because they know he doesn't fill the air with nonsense like the vast majority of the candidates on stage all right i can't believe what else he did ubi as a given he didn't even talk that much about ubi tonight and it was brilliant right you know why he didn't he's already set the bar he's already set the stakes in the ground they're already there right he doesn't need to tell people about udi anymore he's done that work and he could show i'm more than ubi incredibly exciting right he hit it a couple, you know like he didn't even really need to pound those stakes again he's already set them in the ground right all right biggest one of the biggest moment of the night for yang he said, money finds a way. It washes, and, and, and when, when that corporate money comes in, it washes out all the, mo the money of the people in this country who matter, right? And he said, and that's why I'm going to do people-powered people money. I'm going to do $100 democracy dollars. Give it to every single American, right? And that's going to allow us to move forward and allow everybody in America to have some political speech through money. Brilliant idea. Here's the most important part about it. It was the only unique original idea in the entire debate. No one else said anything that hadn't been said before. Yang's like, I already gave you UBI. It's brilliant. Here's my next brilliant idea. Because that's all he is. He's just brilliant ideas, execution, kindness, and awesomeness. Right? And cool poncho. All right. The other thing that Yang did, oh my gosh, his execution was so perfect, right? That he absolutely indicted abc 
and every other network. He's like, why am I being... So with his, with his words of freight, his words of meaning, his words of consequence, right? He showed the world, check this out, right? He's like, why am I being ignored? You want to know why I'm being ignored? He said this all, like this was the subtext, right? You heard the text tonight, but this is the subtext. Why am I being ignored? Here's why I'm being ignored. Because the networks are telling you the candidates that matter, and they are working hard to hide the candidates that actually matters. That's it, right? All right, he crushed it. What were some of his power lines tonight? He had quite a few strong power lines, right? So uh, he opened up, had a fantastic open. 10 families are going to get the freedom dividend and then he gave a call to action he gave a call to action right at the beginning right he's like hey go to my go to my site and learn about the freedom dividend and when you put in your ideas there you could be one of those families that we're going to give the freedom dividend to and that was a lot there so one it was a cool call to action which leaders do call to actions they're tough it's hard to but he did a good job with it and then the other thing is he was like he was saying i'm going to make things change and i'm, I'm doing that literally right now Right, and so I thought it was a really good start, uh, and then also it was reminding everybody that UBI is a call to action. A lot of people forget this, but when you give somebody a thousand dollars a month, they need to do something with it. So UBI itself is a call to action, and that's why Andrew Yang started with a call to action. He's going to be calling for the people of America to change things, not just him. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. All right, uh, he had a really funny line. He said. I am Asian, so I know a lot of doctors. <laughs> I laughed out loud at that line. I thought it was funny. You do need to make the people laugh every now and then. Uh, he, he had some great ones. He was like, let's make this nation work for us, not us working for it. He said, we are the owners and shareholders of this democracy. He talked about immigration. He, said, he talked about how immigration brings America social dynamism. He said, you know, immigrants can come here and their children can be our president. Amen to that. Amen to that, right? Uh, and also, I thought he was one of the few candidates that really talked about immigration beyond Mexico. Our, our immigrations are bigger than, than Mexico. Trump has been pointing at a wall, you know, for Mexico. It's like the only country that, that immigrates here. Where's the, where's the Canadian wall, right? Like, you, ne you never hear him talking about that, right? Like, so I thought that was really cool. He, 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 he drew the scope of immigration larger and broader than Mexico, because it is, right? Uh, he got a great question, which was tariffs on day one, and uh, he, he said, hey, are you going to drop the steel tariffs on day one? He's like, no, right? And, he go, and then he rolled up hard on China. He's like, they steal our intellectual property, and I just had a buddy over there who said that um, that on their machines they have thousands of dollars of our software, and I thought it was great. I, thought, I, I think it's really cool that he's calling out China. He's showing his strength on China. Fantastic. All right. He also said, we as Americans need to own what we can't, what we can and we cannot do. He says we're not good at rebuilding countries. Totally agree with that. We should not be rebuilding other countries, right? He said, uh, "Trust to make." Uh, he said, "Trust me to make the right decision about where our young men and women are deployed. I will trust him. I'm ready, right? And I think you guys are too. All right. Uh, oh, one of the best lines he gave all night. Teachers are worth their weight in gold." absolutely they are totally worth their weight in gold um and then finally there was a resilience question resilience question was the best question of the night he knocked it out of the park it was a perfect answer right he the resilience question was where have you shown your resilience because when you had a professional failure a professional failure a professional failure right like they were like this needs to be about your profession right and he's like yeah i had a and he told he answered the question dead on did not waver for a second, right? Answered the question dead on. And he used the question to tell a personal failure he had um, as soon as he had gra graduated college, right? And he told, and he, he, he said, hey, I've had failures, which I love failure. Personally, I'm Scott Garibay. I'll tell you right now, I, I love failure because you get benefits you never expect from them. And if you're not failing, it just means you're not trying anything of significance, right? So, and guess what? Andrew Gang tries things of significance. All right, so check this out. And then he told his whole story, except education, right? Uh, he carefully hid the fact that he's double Ivy League, super dope, awesome, intelligent, right? Because he graduated Brown and Columbia. And I'm, so, and I'm sorry I keep saying that because I, I will not shut up about it. And it probably should be hidden from Americans, right? Because, like, 
he is super well educated, right? And that does distance him from a lot of Americans. But like, so I don't like that. That's that was hidden. But he was right to hide it. So he hid his education. But then he talked about his corporate uh, successes and he talked about his benevolence, right? But only after he told about a real story of failure, he knocked it out of the park. I was so excited to see what he did tonight. I'm just over the moon, and I cannot tell you how excited I am to see our country hurtling toward a president of a president's a president of consequence i truly believe without a doubt andrew yang will be our greatest president since abraham lincoln right abraham lincoln andrew yang that's that's it that's like george washington abraham lincoln andrew yang that's american history in six words right and that that's the best of us right and i am super super excited to see andrew yang slam dunk this primary slam dunk a victory on uh donald trump andrew yang crushed it tonight and i am super 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 excited at the absolute freight train momentum he is showing thank you very much for letting me share these ideas with you i would love to hear what you think how do you think he did tonight let me know in the comments below please please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium Oh, one more thing, sorry. Uh, I have so many thoughts about what happened tonight, and I just talk, talked about Andrew Yang, right? But I'm going to do a second video tonight, right after this one, right? And talk about how every other candidate gained or lost ground against Yang. Because Andrew Yang owns the world. We're just living in it. <laughs> like, okay. Please consider like subscribing and have a wonderful millennium. Take care.